Welcome back. Let us now get the facts. Over a week ago, the Uganda Journalists Association, which we will call UJA, in this discussion, flanked by the Human Rights Network of Journalists, which we will call HRNJ, in this discussion, uh, they, they did a call for a boycott of a reported police brutality towards the media in their line of duty. However, the boycott seems to be sailing in difficult waters, but to help us navigate what it entails and how it is progressing, we have the Executive Director of the Human Rights and Network of Journalists, Robert Simpala. Welcome to Talk of the Nation tonight. Thank you for having me. We, uh, as you already heard me say, we do believe that right now we think the boycott is sailing in, uh, in difficult waters. Mm. What is your view on that? I partly agree, but also I think we're making good progress because uh, the journalists have uh, uh, asserted their position, especially the journalists that go to the field to fish for stories. Uh, we might not judge this uh, campaign going by what uh, some people that don't go to the field are saying, but the best feedback can be got from those that are uh, fall victims, mm -hmm. especially those that get beaten, their cameras are uh, uh, vandalized, um, their materials deleted, and uh, tear gassed. Those ones have really believed being on the front line to make their point that mm. uh, they are not happy and that they are being brutalized. Mm. So for us, uh, our side, uh, assess the performance of this campaign, the, the media blackout on the police, by way of how the foot soldiers are responding. At some point, you might not get the editors. Uh, certainly, it's understandable. They're working on so many things. You may not get the managers and uh, the Before the we even get to there. getting yes. the managers and then the editors, mm. as HR, as HRNJ, yes. you seem to be side by side in regards to this boycott with the UJA, with Uganda Journalists Association. Is that true? Yeah, that is very true. Ourselves, that is Human Rights Network for Agency Uganda, mm. uh, Uganda Journalists Association, UJA, Uganda Parliamentary Press Association, and uh, in the background, they have not been to the fore, Uganda Media Women Association, Madame Margaret St. Am, and a couple of other people are in total support of what we have done. And because they think that we have talked a lot, they call it lamentation, we have you know, been there and talked a lot, and that we have fallen short of actions. So it's at this point where we thought we need to make a louder point that even is hard and visible to all Ugandans. And I think everyone now has seen that the journalists are not comfortable in their driving seat of gathering and disseminating information mm -hmm. to their audiences. So how did the journalism fraternity get to the point where they said, you know, the boycott is the best option? Yeah, the actions that you take, both in the short term, mid term and long term uh, processes. But this was a, a short term thing that, you know, it so happened instantly and we thought we needed to respond as such. Uh, we needed to talk to the IGP face to face. We have had press conferences, and we think maybe he's too busy to even watch or listen. But he has people that I think trickle information through to him. We do not know what he's told. So we thought that we needed to march over to the police headquarters. And that is why we even made uh, pre-arrangements uh, to meet him. Mm -hmm. One, by writing to him through our umbrella body, Uja. And of course, our letter was rejected on Friday. Then we picked a phone and called the IGP himself. And he said, oh, okay, guys, I'm not going to be able to meet you Monday, but I have Hassan Kasinje, who is in charge of um, po uh, the political commissariate at the police. And we said, fine. We called Kasinje and told us 11 a.m., be at the headquarters. We are ready to receive your petition. So this was a very well-organized uh, uh, process, and we were utterly shocked to be met with resistance and brutality mm -hmm. on the very day. Oh, interesting. What you're trying to say is that you actually did communicate. A lot. You did talk to the right people. Yes. But then you were surprised when you saw the police set ready to actually mm. treat and you in the way they treated yes. you. Yes. And I was leading a team that assembled at Wuma in Logogo, Uganda Manufacturers Association ground. We were very peaceful, working hand in hand. We even advised our colleagues to pull down the placards and walk uh, smoothly to the police headquarters present this petition. One, we wanted to get there and uh, force for the release of our colleagues who had been arrested. Most of them had been arrested from uh, 
uh, our group and another from the group that started uh, within town led by Bashir Maybe Kazim to clear Bazira. that as well. Yeah. Have these journalists been released? Yeah, all of them were released that okay. day. Even as we started the discussions, two were still being uh, held uh, mm -hmm. by the police. But then we impressed it upon the leaders that we met and they ordered for their release. So you say this was a planned move. Yes. However, there are some concerns that mm. you did not make prior consultations with different media editors and managers to let them know that, look here, we need, uh, we need to do a boycott because of this and that and that. What do you have to say about that? Is it true you did not make prior consultations with the editors? And that is why maybe some journalists did not fully take part in this boycott. Um, we have not, never gotten 100% uh, compliance from all our actors. That even those editors who I personally called and informed them of what we are going to, to, to do. And they said, no, you can't do that. But you, you people, eh? for them, I told them, I understand the difference, the bigger gap between the boardroom and the newsroom. You people do not feel the pinch of what the foot soldiers go through. But at some point, you need to identify with them. You need to stand with them. For once, show that you are very touched by what happens to them in the course of them fishing for stories to sustain your work as editors. And two of them said, okay, I'll send so-and-so to come and cover you. Another one said, I'll send so-and-so, a personality that came and uh, even entered with us, the police headquarters. Initially, they were very negative. But they are editors that we do not get out to. However, what should be understood, that in such campaigns, you do not wait for a letter to come to you. If it is a cause, and you really feel that this cause is within your docket as an editor, don't be a resistant force in the campaign to make sure that the journalists operate in a smooth and uh, conducive environment. Mm -hmm. You really need it more than even they need it. Because even if a journalist chooses to leave, you're going to be there as an editor. So this fight may not be based on letters. We really kindly ask you, uh, ask you, please be proactive and say, this is a campaign that is worth joining. When the monitor was closed down, we led a, a sit-down campaign at the monitor in Namuongo. And most people in the monitor said, we are not part and parcel of that campaign. Once we tried the first day, we were tear gas, uh, chest around, we came back the second day. Third day, everybody in the monitor came and joined. That's how you saw Chris O'Boris, the Charles Mwangusha and Pages, and many others from the monitor join us. So when you're beginning a campaign, you do not expect to move along with everyone. You begin and show leadership. I am sure many editors are now with us. There are a few that will never be with us even if we talk to them and even uh, give them... Uh, um, inducements to come and join us. We know for a fact that there are some editors that have never really stood for a cause of uh, uh, the, the theft of journalists. I even know of an owner who says, me if a journalist sees tear gas, I tell them you run to your homes. Don't even stand around. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the approach. Interesting, but I also believe that it was a bit of a failure on your part not to communicate to the editors, to let them know of, you know, this is what we need to do. However, we also know we've had, if you watched news stories this week, yes. the police also said that Uja specifically refused or uh, failed to provide evidence of the affected journalists. Is that true? I saw that being um, said by Afande Fred Enanga and I laughed in my chair. Because Enanga doesn't expect us to, to come and give evidence to who now? Because part of the demands that we made in our petition was to institute a, a, a table or a department or a team or a commission where we would channel all these pieces of evidence that we have. And uh, without any shame, he said what was running on TVs were old footages. But everybody knows that there were fresh injuries that were occasioned to journalists in Macquarie University even on that day. Mm -hmm. the, we, we document a lot along those lines. And police have so, never come out um, to say um, this is not... Uh, uh, have you in this particular uh, uh, period documented these different affected persons and taken them to the police and they dispute the information? Have you? What we are looking at here, yeah, mm -hmm. as part of our demands, one is to institute a committee okay. that will handle these claims, investigate them thoroughly, mm -hmm. and prosecute those that are implicated. We're not going to run around w doing what we have done for the last 10 years, going to the police, opening up a case, and it's never investigated. Mm -hmm. And people are even wondering why are these cases not generating to court for hearing. Because the police 
is now being chased after by us, the journalists, and they're the ones now that are supposed to investigate themselves. Mm -hmm. So you do not expect any good. Look at a case that happened with Andrew Ranga, who was badly beaten in broad daylight, and footage was going all over. But it took us going to the streets the next day in order, in order, in order for Joram to be arrested and taken to court. If we had not done that, they were going to cover up for him. And even saw how the investigations were trying to frustrate us in court. So it would be doing the ordinary the rhetorics of going to police to open up cases, which we certainly know that will never be investigated. Mm. Many people know that have been around that police kills our cases if they even dare, um, care to investigate, investigate them a quarter of what is required. Mm. So what Enanga is saying is just playing on people's minds that we have to go and adduce evidence to who now? Mm. So what is the progress in regards to the meeting that you had with the Assistant Inspector of, of Police, Asan Kasinje? We, have, we met Asan Kasinje, we met Asman Mogeni and uh, Basbi Akagawa, all the commissioners of police. And uh, because we didn't meet the IGP, mm. we were promised that uh, our petition would be handed over to the IGP and that he was waiting for it. And then we were told that uh, the police will have a senior management meeting on Wednesday. And so a feedback, a feedback would be given thereafter. So we understood that to mean like a Thursday or a Friday. But when we didn't get anything back, my colleagues, uh, Upa, uh, President Moses Molondo, and Uja President Bashir, consulted with us, HRNG, who out of Kampala, and they did a press conference, giving an ultimatum of six days mm. within which to get um, uh, uh, convincing feedback from the police. If that is not done, then we will convene another press conference to uh, announce our other steps and let people not think. We even told the police that we met mm. at the police headquarters that this is only the beginning of a longer campaign that will see you at least respond to our cries for once. Okay, so, you do talk of a longer campaign. What mm -hmm. happens if the police uh, uh, ignores the boycott? If the police uh, ignores the boycott, ignores the, the boycott, I know they are not ignoring it. I know they have held meetings over it. Mm -hmm. I know they are calling editors, managers, and owners of media houses to lure them to their sides. I know they are panicking. Uh, but if they completely pretended they are not feeling a pinch, that would be pretense of the highest order. As, as journalists, trust us and watch us that we're going to take it to another level. Interesting. And, this, <laughs> and that other level would have so many dynamics in it um. to make our point that we're not happy. We, no, we can't stomach this forever. Mm -hmm. Look at a journalist that leaves their home to come and do the noble cause of reporting and you know, informing a nation mm. and then is all over met with brutality, beaten, and there is impunity. Mm. We can't stomach impunity forever. Thank you so much for coming to our studios tonight. We definitely would love to hear you speak more, but uh, we are running out of time. We do, however, hope it doesn't get worse. We hope the relationship can be mended, and because we know the we police very, very and hopeful. the media really need we are very each hopeful. other. Actually, we don't need the police. Mm. We want to work with the police. Okay. We want to work with everyone. Okay. That's why we're laboring to say, let's work on our relationships. Okay. Thank you so much. As he says, let's work on our relationships. Let us mend our relationship. Let the police come out to listen to the journalists' grievances. And also, the journalists should be very clear on what they need and uh, what should be done to mend this uh, spoiled relationship. Thank you for joining us on Talk of the Nation and TV Weekend Edition. We'll continue shortly.